Greetings, internets. Welcome to another episode of Rad Nerd. I'm your host, Bo Ryan. Today on the show, Damien's got comics and collectibles. I got my buy list, and we head down to Meltdown Comics and speak with special guest, multimedia DJ, Mike Realm. Yes, from San Francisco, now living in LA. I'm so psyched to meet him. He is an assassin on the ones and twos. That means turntables for you people who don't know. Welcome to Tuesday's The Bitch, the segment where I share my picks for this week's releases. First up, L.A. Noir. Yes, Rockstar, another grand slam. Game of the year, guaranteed. It's like GTA meets L.A. Confidential. Brought to you by Rockstar Games, L.A. Noir is a dark and violent detective thriller. Yes! Set against the backdrop of LA in the late 1940s, where you take the reins of rookie detective Cole Phelps as he solves gruesome and mind-bending cases, interrogates suspects, and rises through the ranks of the LAPD. LA Noir utilizes a brand new motion scan technology, providing an unprecedented level of realism, detail, emotion never before seen in any video game ever bringing to life characters in a totally new way. If you're a fan of the Rockstar developers, you will love this. If you're not, you will still love this. Definitely a buy, available on Xbox 360 and PS3. Next on my list is the Marvel animated feature, Thor Tales of Asgard on Blu-ray. Sorry ladies, a shirtless Chris Hemsworth not included. Brought to you by Marvel, obviously. Before the God of Thunder lifted the mighty hammer, there was a sword. Yes, Thor secretly embarks on a lifetime journey joined by his little brother Loki. A budding sorcery equips him with just enough magic to conjure up trouble, along with the Warriors Three, a band of boastful travelers reluctant to set sail on an adventure that might actually be dangerous. What starts out to be a harmless treasure hunt quickly turns deadly, and Thor must save Asgard itself. Do not expect the Thor you saw in the theater. The story is not epic. The animation is not great. It's your basic Saturday morning cartoon on Blu-ray. It's sharp and it's vivid. Yes, the sound is great, but this Blu-ray is definitely a rental. Last on my list is the Shaw Brothers classic, finally on Blu-ray, The Five Deadly Venoms. <laughs> Brought to you by Shaw Brothers, the dying master of the powerful Poison Clan assigns his final martial arts students one last epic quest, find his five most mysterious and dangerous disciples, each trained in a different fighting style, and bring them together to root out a conspiracy that could divide and destroy the entire clan. A hands down, definite Shaw Brothers cult classic collection. This belongs in the library of any martial arts fan. Definitely a buy. That's my list for Tuesdays a bitch. If there's anything you want us to check out, hit us up on Twitter at RadNerd, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube, tell us what you picked up in the comments, and for all things rad, check out radnerd.com. Welcome to Issues, I'm Damien from thecomicbooknerd.com, here to give you my top picks for comics sold this week. And there were a lot of them, too. <sighs> Look at them all. <laughs> Avengers number 13. Superstar artist Chris Bacalo reunites with Eisner Award-winning writer Brian Michael Bendis to confront fear itself. It's the calm before the storm as the threat of the Red Skull and the other hammer-wielding worthy looms over the Marvel Universe. So what better to have in a Fear Itself tie-in? Lots and lots of exposition. Add some blossoming romance for the ladies and sprinkle in some humor just to lull you into a full sense of security. There isn't a hint of action in this book, other than Spidey hurling in his mask. Mm. There's a Jean Grey X-Men Evolutions variant by Paul Renaud as well. Batman and Robin number 23. Jason Todd, Batman's one-time sidekick, currently the anti-hero known as Red Hood, has been imprisoned in Arkham Asylum for the past several months. But after a period of good behavior and a transfer to a lower security prison does not mean reformation for Jason Todd. And trouble is waiting in the wings for Batman and Robin. Pick up The Streets Run Red, part one of three. There's also a very, very cool variant covered by Gene Ha. Last Mortal number one. 
Alec King is a born loser, a small-time criminal who has never succeeded in anything in his life and whose fear of failure has crippled him. When his only friend, Brian, the brains and charm of their two-man operation, convinces Alec to help him with a hit contract on a mayoral candidate, his life unravels to rock bottom. But sometimes we need to hit rock bottom to begin the climb towards a better day. Add surviving a bullet to the head and you have a pretty good compelling story. So head on over to comicbooknerd.com to see all the other comic books coming out this week and let us know what is on your pull list. Marvel Entertainment and ABC Studios are proud to announce Castle, Richard Castle's Deadly Storm, an all-new hardcover graphic novel inspired by the popular Castle television series starring Nathan Fillion. Now, a brief summary if you haven't seen it yet, after a serial killer imitates the plots of his novels, successful mystery novelist Richard Rick Castle gets permission from the mayor of New York City to tag along with an NYPD homicide investigation team for research purposes. When viewers first met Richard Castle, he had reached celebrity author status with the success of his Derek Storm mystery novels. In an unprecedented collaborative effort between Marvel, ABC Studios, and the producers of Castle, the adventures of Derek Storm will be chronicled in an all-new graphic novel from some of the most accomplished creators in the industry, including Brian Michael Bendis. This 112-page hardcover hits comic shops and bookstores everywhere on September 28th, 2011. Now that's all this week for issues. Follow us on Twitter at A Comic Book Nerd and check out the latest news on comic related awesomeness at thecomicbooknerd.com. Now be sure to click like, subscribe to us, and drop a comment down below to let us know how we're doing. And I'll see you next week. Thank you, Damien. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here again at Meltdown Comics in Los Angeles with our guest, Multimedia DJ Mike Realm. Hello. For a second, I thought you were going to say multi-millionaire. Multi-millionaire is good. I got really excited. <laughs> you do look like it's a multi-millionaire. It's a facade. It's just I a facade. Yeah. So, uh, do do you like do you like the title multimedia DJ? Is that is that um, the official title? I, I saw that as a lower third in one of your interviews. Yeah, that's the, one of the things that that I've never been able to grasp is a title for what I do. Yeah. So that's kind of the best description. What do you of tell it. your parents that you do? Th I tell them that and they're like, so when are you going back to school? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I don't, it's really weird. And I, if I heard that from somebody, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it either. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's, it's really tough to, to make it sound exciting, but it's like, it's like, I always got to be, you know, just like, okay, this is what I do, but trust me, it's not as nerdy as it sounds. Like everyone right. has fun. Like jocks come to my shows and like everyone, it's all right. Fun. What, 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 did, what title do you not, have you heard that you don't like? Um, I don't know why, I, I just, I don't like uh, the title of DJ. Because okay. it's so broad and it's so like, right. it, it means. It can mean radio, it can it, mean. It can mean radio, wedding, like bar mitzvah, like, and that's what most people know it as. So right. it's like, okay, so you, you, you do like weddings and stuff? We have a birthday coming up. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no. We have a superhero party we're doing for my kids. <laughs> I might do that though. So t t for the people who, who haven't checked out your YouTube page, um, what exactly do you do? I take things that I really like and remix them. So it'll be uh, like the Iron Man 2 trailer. I really liked it. So I remixed it. Uh, uh, I am Iron Man. The uh, Doctor Who trailer, like that, remixed it. This time is not your vision. There was one where this woman was talking about a robbery. Get, get down. She said that she was hiding. I'm backing up, backing up, backing up. There was like some shootout. It was crazy. It sounded like something from a movie, but she was clearly insane. Oh. Okay, there's another guy, um, Korean guy. He was teaching Korean people <laughs> yes. what. American swear words were. What the fuck? From what I can gather, it is an instructional video for Koreans who are traveling to the United States. Oh, I, I'm not sick. And, and they want to show them what a swear word is. So like, if someone's calling you an asshole, you don't want to be like, oh, thank you. Like, you know, right. I'm, I'm just visiting. Like, no, no, no. Like, they're calling you an asshole and this is what asshole means and you're a dick. So. Yeah, and you should punch them in the face. Your, your, your dancing is fucking sick. So that was kind of interesting to me. Um, and the Iron Man one, it was it got you a lot of buzz because that was actually used as a as a commercial? Yeah, well, it was, I, I posted mine and, and John Favreau happened to see it and he hit me up on Twitter and I was like, <laughs> Oh, Wait, what? what? <laughs> I love this. Um, and, and he he liked it and, and wanted to see if I wanted to make a, uh, a shorter television spot out of it. You can't, you can't have it.
it. So I recut the whole, they gave me like real footage. It wasn't just like stuff I pulled from like yeah. Apple trailers. <laughs> and it came out cool. Yeah. Like it was, there was no, um, you know, you always think like, oh, it's gonna be a commercial, so it's gotta be like toned down or like not what you originally had in mind. But like, you know, we, we would go back and forth with ideas and it was like, oh, this is better than what I thought it would be. First time I saw you live, do a live show, was at, uh, at Comic-Con. <laughs> and I was totally blown away. <laughs> like I, I as much as I wanted to watch a Dignation show, I seriously left after you performed. Wow. Yeah, you, you totally blew me away. It, I mean, you were even, you were using footage from like hookups, like skate videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I pull from everything. That's the cool thing about my show is, is uh, you know, as, as a DJ, I would pretty much only use music that I liked. Right. And that was kind of my thing. Um, it, it definitely uh, deterred me from doing you know, regular club gigs and, and that kind of stuff. But then I was like, I don't want to play that stuff anyways. So right. Whatever. Uh, and I kind of approach my new show the same way with the visuals. Like if I see a movie and I and I and I like it, um, I'll use it, or I'll I'll be inspired uh, to do something else visually because it's a whole other thing. It's like it, you have the music and that's great, but the visuals is another way to communicate with the audience. And like you know, it's 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 fairly new, so it. it has that element of surprise. It's like, oh, here's a DJ. It's time to go to the bar. Wait, what? Yeah. You know. So tell me, what is your favorite music module that you that you have or you you, you played with? Um, because you probably have a bunch of them. Like, do when you go yeah. into the Guitar Center, do you just like have a techgasm in your pants and? Pretty much. I mean, you know what the funny thing is, it's still the turntable. <laughs> Still the turntable. Yeah, because uh, I mean I'm, I love technology, and if there was a replacement for a turntable, you like I guarantee I'd be on it because it, it's it's really tough to work with. It's analog. It's um, you know you're, you're relying on this tiny needle to for your for your sound. It's yeah. like you're in a stadium. It's like oh my god, like really this all right. Break, 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 break. But there just hasn't been a a, a good uh, replacement for there's still certain things that you can do with records that you can't do with like you know the any touch screen there's that instant like you can you're touching the sound and now I'm touching the visuals so I have, I have a direct well it, it technically it's not direct but it, it is to me it's a direct uh, contact with what's going on and that's important to me because I'm, I'm maybe I'm just used to it right uh, but I do have a lot I, I use the uh, the lemur the touch screen yeah, that thing's pretty iPad, insane. That, that's crazy. Now he's the iPad and there's all the kind of, uh, all sorts of uh, MIDI devices that, you know, with knobs and, and physical buttons, because some things you just can't do on a touchscreen too, although it's super cool to right. do it. Now, I, when I first got to nerd it out with some uh, music here, I, I picked up the, the Boss, the Dr. Groove. Nice. That was pretty awesome. Uh, for someone who wanted to get started like today, what would you recommend they pick up? What would be like, the starter kit, you know, to, to, to do what you're doing. If you're, if you want to be a DJ, there's a lot of like starter packages that are cheap and, and they're actually not bad. I went to, um, I went to Best Buy the other day and I saw they have DJ in a box like starter packages, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not the stuff that you would take with you throughout your career. Right. But it's good to start out if, if yeah. you're not like fully committed. Fog machine. Yeah, you don't want to like go balls <laughs> out ball. and just get everything yeah. and spend all that money and then, and then take it home and realize like, I'm just not for me. Because right. it, it, it happens and yeah. I've seen that happen to people and it's like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. How much you want for those turntables? <laughs> <laughs> in, in your record collection, what do you have most of? Uh, mostly hip hop. Mostly hip hop. Yeah, because that's what I started listening to and that's what. Early 90s hip hop. Me, definitely early 90s hip hop, yeah. the, uh, the golden age as we like to call it. Yeah. But all that stuff like that was there was so much scratching on it that that's the sound that really drew me into music period. You know, I played piano and, and like trumpet and the school band and whatever. But like DJing and scratching was like the thing that I felt like really I, I, there's something about it that that I felt right about. Yeah. Um, Whatever it was, it's that sound. You know, I was like, "What? What is that? That's not a. That's not an instrument. That's not really. Is that even in key? I'm not really sure. But whatever, I right. can do it." Aside from uh, from doing all your your scratching stuff on your YouTube page, Realm Vision, mm -hmm. you also have your separate one that's just Mike Realm, where you do a lot of directing and stuff. 
Yeah, well that one I'm actually kind of changing into more of a music page. Okay. Because now um, I'm doing the, the, the video remixes and that's, that's that and I love doing that. But I also don't have an outlet for music, just like tracks. Right. But I have all these tracks that I, that I haven't put out because there's, you know, there's no, um, I mean iTunes is cool, but I, I want, I want to, I just want to give it away to be yeah. honest. <laughs> you know I, mean? I like the idea of people just like kind of getting it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, SoundCloud, and, I guess, is getting a little popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think my, like most of my audience is on YouTube, on YouTube already. Right. So it's like, yeah. hey guys, check this out. And they don't have to go anywhere else. Exactly. They just kind of live in there. So let's talk about some of your videos. You recently, your last one you put out was the Zero video. Mm -hmm. Which was amazing. I've never heard of that film. And yeah. since you played that, I'm like, holy shit. Like, I want to go watch this. Yeah, I caught the trailer and I was like, Wait, what? Is, what is this? We all make a conscious decision to allow something to control our lives. And it's definitely not like, like if I were to pull like you know the Green Hornet or something. Right. So I, that was what I was doing a lot. Was taking like the most popular exactly. ones. And the idea of being a DJ is is you play new music for people. You know what I mean? You play the the, the radio hits, then they dance to it, but then you also introduce them to something new. That right. was like, you know. Back in the day, that's what a DJ did. Now it's a little different. Yeah. But um, you know, I kind of kind of thought of it that way. Like, well, you know, I, I have I have these videos that people really like that on a subject that they they're already into. Why not show them something cool that they might not know about? Yeah. And your most viewed one was the was the Old Spice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you just see that? And you're like, oh, I, I have to do this. I'm on a horse. I'm on a horse. I'm on, I'm on a horse. Yeah, that was, I saw the campaign, what they were doing with the uh, responses, and I was like, ah, it'd be cool to get a response, because if he says, Mike Realm, hello, I can use that in my live show. I'd right. be like, scratch that, and then we'd be like, oh, he said his name, it's like a cool yeah. little drop. Uh, never happened. No. So, <laughs> I, but I was watching it, and I was like, okay, well, there's a lot of stuff here. Where'd that hot go? He's just talking, and he's making these weird noises sometimes. <laughs> I, I just ripped all of the videos and, and made a remix. And I was like, okay, this has, I can't sit on this. I can't just like, you know, because it's, it's so time sensitive. Like that kind right. of thing was like trending on every possible yeah. avenue it could. Um, so I stayed up till like five in the morning uh, making that remix and I put it out in the morning and went to sleep and I woke up at around noon and, and I saw, I was like, oh, this is, Getting a lot of attention. This is really <laughs> weird, um, but it it got a lot of help um, from like barely political and and Philip DeFranco talked about it and I Justine talked about it. So it was like it definitely got a little bit of help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was pretty exciting. You obviously are inspired by you know music and movies, um, sometimes even video games. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what what stuff are you looking forward to working on? I feel like I've done less TV shows. Okay. And I, and I was thinking about that the other day. And I think mentally for me, it's it's because, you know, like you take like Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. It's like God, that's so good, but there's so much. Like where right. where do I start with this? Exactly. You know what I mean? But like for for Harry Potter, that was I had to go through seven films. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry. No way. This is about the philosophy stuff. That that probably took me the longest out of any. Any remix. I mean, are you sitting there and you're watching every movie and mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm taking that clip. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it's great because I get to watch stuff, but at the same time, I gotta be so active. It's like, okay, well, let me mark that, and okay, well, you know. yeah. Uh, You're like, oh, I forgot how good this was. I yeah, was just... <laughs> and you get lost, like, I forgot to log the clips. And I know you take a lot of like user requests, you know, from mm -hmm. your subscribers. Yeah, that's important too, because it's like, yeah. it's just like doing a live show. Like, you know instantly what works and what doesn't. I've done some remixes where it's like, no, I don't think they like this as much. Uh, and others, it's like, oh, cool, I should do more of that. But then you gotta walk the line of like, do you wanna just keep giving them what they're asking for? Right. Cause is this a request show or is it like, you know? Uh, speaking of your uh, taking, you know, being interactive with your fans, let's take some Twitter questions and I see. I love Twitter questions. Let's see what we, uh, if we can get some good ones. At Black Nerd. You ever heard of this guy? <laughs> black Nerd? <laughs> Who's this kind of is name he, is that? Is he really black? Uh, I don't think he is. There's, there's no, nothing, nothing black about the guy. Um, he wants to know, uh, do you want to trade glasses? 
I would love to trade glasses. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting sick of these things. Okay. Do you know his prescription? <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, at a comic book nerd wants to know, would you be interested in making any mixes outside of the instruments you normally use? Hmm. Outside hmm. of my comfort zone. Maybe electronic drums. You know, maybe some. Uh, I definitely would, but I wouldn't be the guy playing them. Yeah. Like someone like Kevin Pereira. Yeah, you can get Kevin and you guys can do a cameo. wicked on the drums. Yeah, he like, is. I'm sure you've, dude is crazy. Yeah. Um, but for me, I like I wouldn't, you know, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm not that guy. Uh, but I definitely would. I, I like to collaborate. I've collaborated with people on, on with drums and, and guitars and strings, so it's, Always good. Uh, I just, I'm not the guy playing it. Mike, thanks for coming on the show. Anytime. You're an awesome, awesome guy. I, I love your steez. Uh, you're very talented. So Thank keep you. doing what you're doing. Uh, follow his tweets at Mike Realm and subscribe to his YouTube, Realm Vision. And for all things rad, check out radnerd.com. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>